Ever since I created the original Just Say No to Hybrid video explaining that you don't need to join your devices to your on-premises domain to access your on-premises resources, a lot of you have reached out to me and explained that this only works if you're using a password to log in and not Hello for Business or any other passwordless credential. Yeah, you're right. To get this to work with Hello for Business, you do need to do some work. Although saying that, this stuff is actually pretty easy. You just got to do two things, and that's set up Azure AD Kerberos and also configure a Hello for Business policy and deploy that to devices. First, we'll just open up PowerShell ISE as admin so that we can do some scripting. Just open up this new script and copy in this stuff. So we're going to run this to allow TLS 1.2. Next, we're going to just install this module and wait for that to install. Nice and quick. Next, I'm just going to copy in this next bit of the script we need to be running. So, firstly, we need to get the on premises Active Directory domain, and we can grab that from the DNS domain of our user. So, we'll just grab that. Next, we need to grab the Azure AD Global Administrator username and password. Let's tap those in. After that, we'll grab the local domain administrator username and password. And next, we're going to run this one command to set up Azure AD Kerberos. Let's give it a go. Okay, it took a few seconds. Next, we're going to just run a get command to see what information it pulls back. So, just run through these. ID is the unique identifier of the ADDS domain controller object. So you can see it's created a user account for us called KRBTGT, that stands for Kerberos Ticket Granting Ticket. And that is a user on our on-premises domain, which holds the Ticket Granting Ticket encryption key. So let's just jump into AD Users and Computers and just take a look, we'll refresh this page. Let's take a look and see if we can find that user it's created for us. Yeah, there it is, KRBTGT. And that's the Azure AD Kerberos server user account. And so that's Azure AD Kerberos all configured. Next, we need to configure and deploy Windows Hello for Business. I'm going to deploy it as an enrollment profile because the computer I'm going to set up to demonstrate this hasn't been installed yet. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the enrollment profile. Heading over to the Intune portal, choose Devices, scroll down to Enroll Devices, and make sure you're in the Windows enrollment and then choose Hello for Business. This is the default profile that deployed to all users. I'm just going to choose uh, Configure Windows Hello for Business. At the moment, it's set to Not Configured. We'll set that to Enabled. And you can see we've got some extra options now. It's very important and it's really recommended that we use a trusted platform module to verify with anything to do with security, but also as certainly hello for business. We'll set the minimum pin length to six and the maximum pin length to 127. Those are default settings. Just scroll down. We'll allow biometric authentication and also configure enhanced anti-spoofing when available. I also want to enable security keys for a future video. For now, we'll just save that and move on. The next thing we need to do is create a custom configuration profile. And this custom configuration profile allows Windows Hello for Business Cloud Trust. So we'll just go to Devices, down to Configuration Profiles, choose Create Profile, and the platform we're going to go for is Windows 10 and later. Profile type will be Templates, and just go down to Custom and choose Create. We'll give it a name that makes sense. Just missed the W off there. And next. And we're going to go with Add and then tap in Windows Love of Business Cloud Kerberos Trust as the name. It's a free text field, but something meaningful so you remember what it is. And also a description there, again, to help us remember what that's there for. In the OMA URI, we need to tap in a specific string. So we're going to grab, we're going to grab a notepad and tap it in here. As you can see, it's device, vendor, Microsoft, passport for work, 
and then we need the tenant ID. So I'll just quickly grab that and stick that into the string just there. And all good. Pop that in there. And the data type needs to be Boolean. We're going to make it true. And there we go. Choose save and deploy this to all users. Choose next. Don't need any applicability rules, so I can just choose next and then review and create. Quickly have a look through what we've done. Looks good to me. What do you create? All right, that's all done. So next, I want to quickly show you what we've got with regards to the um, the file share environment that we're going to be testing with. I've just created a quick demonstration. I've just created a quick demo file share for us to take a look at, which is right here. So it's DC1. Obviously, don't put file shares on domain controllers in production environments, but I have in this case because I'm not using a production environment. Yeah, anyway, we've got a file share called file share. It's got a couple of read-only shares there and a writable share. Uh, it's got some text documents in there. Nothing complicated. It's just to show you that we can actually access that without a password. Let's jump over to our um, the new device that I've got. I haven't set it up at all. I've connected a HDMI cable so I can capture it. So let's take a look. It's at the out-of-box experience screen. As you can see, it's not autopilot. It's just going to go through all the standard in, uh, installation process, but I'll speed things up where I need to. So let's just go through this. Now, in this case, obviously, this is going to be a corporate machine, not a personal machine. I want to join it to my Azure AD environment. So we'll go with organization, tap in the username and it'll ask us for the password. Just tap in her password. And we need to set up MFA. So I'll click my phone. We will uh, set this up and it'll ask us to scan the QR code. So that, yep, that's done. And I'll wait for it to finish. Cool. And yep, receive the prompt. All good. So that's MFA configured. Choose done. Hopefully it'll sign us in. Get us to the hello for business prompt in a moment. I'm expecting it to require me to configure hello for business because that's one of the things I've set in the enrollment profile. Give it a few seconds. Okay, so I've got a fingerprint reader on this device, so I'll just choose set up and just tap this. All good. Right, so next, create a pin. Okay, so we're gonna create a quick pin. Um, get through this MFA prompt first. There we go. Okay, so pin, yeah, minimum six characters. Let's go through that, all done. Right, so we are at the desktop now. The first thing I wanna do is quickly open a command prompt and type in a command called klist. And that will give us the list of tickets that are currently in the environment or in this user's environment that have been cached for this user Every time a user logs in, every sign-in that takes place where you're connected to a domain controller and Azure AD, there will be a ticket created for that user. This is now uh, in place in the environment. You can see the date and time uh, it'll, when it will renew. That's going to allow us to sign in to our on-premise resources without a password. So we'll just take one final look at this device to make sure that there's no trickery. Uh, let's firstly check it can access the uh, domain controller, DC1, it can do, that's all good. Next, we'll do dsreg cmd forward slash status and take a quick look at the status of the device. You can see it's Azure AD joined, not domain joined. See so the device name, the tenant information right there. And yeah, this is not domain joined, it's not hybrid domain joined, it's just an Azure AD machine with a user that is on-premises. Okay, so we'll just close that down and head over to the file share. Now I haven't pre-filled any of this information, so I'm just gonna type slash slash DC1 and it'll, oh yeah, it's got it's got file share there, so we'll just go into that. And you can see we've got read-only file share one and writable file share one. So that's it. I was able to access my on-premises resources.
using an Azure AD joint computer, which was configured with only Windows Hello for Business. I didn't use my password to sign in, apart from during the out-of-box experience, but I wasn't asked for the password when I tried to access the file share. Now, I do want to take a look at what happens if you use a different method of Windows Hello for Business. So if you use a security key, for example, but we'll leave that for another video. For now, yeah, you do need to do some extra work to get Hello for Business devices working in an Azure AD joined only environment, but not that much work. See you next time.